Welcome to Outside Michigan. Thanks for tuning in. On today's show, I'm headed to the big woods with my friend Dave from uh, David's Passage here on YouTube. Check him out. He's got a lot of great videos. Again, that's Dave, David's Passage. And uh, we're going to go out just for an overnighter, uh, mostly just to relax and have a little bit of fun. I'm taking the sled, so we're going to be taking some good food. I'm going to be taking steaks and uh, a couple of other things. Not uh, Nothing survival foodie or anything like that. We're going to go out and have a good time. Also, I'm going to try out my new blue tarp, 12 by 24 just your regular old run-of-the-mill polyethylene tarp, and I'm going to see what kind of shelter I can turn that into. Should be fun. Stay tuned. All right, headed back out into the Lost Nations for a snowy weekend. Myself and uh, my buddy Dave back there. Way back there. Um, been kind of a weird winter in Michigan. On uh, the last video I put up with that, the hammock super shelter, we did uh, in the snow out here in the uh, Lost Nations game area in extreme southern Michigan. Um, since then we've had snow here, snow melt. Um, hasn't been, it's another bad year for ice fishing. We've been, uh, I've been able to get out a couple of times. But the truth is, uh, this is gonna be a tobacco free weekend. Um, Every weekend for Dave's tobacco free, but I've been uh, I've been using chewing tobacco now for about 30 years, and in that time, I've not gone without for more than a couple hours. Uh, even when I was laid up in the hospital, and uh, I quit on Tuesday, nine o'clock. It's Friday. Um, I am using nicotine gum to help out a little bit, but I'm rationing that too. Not using it in places where I wouldn't have used chew. Normally when I hike, I won't chew when I'm walking. But I'll, I'll use it at camp and stuff. So really kind of interested to see how uh, this weekend's going to help uh, kind of help keep my mind occupied and off the, the nicotine, which I don't need. And uh, that's my slide hitting the back of my legs. You know, I'm just hanging out with Dave and... Uh, Sit around a fire, it's a foggy, foggy day. Got a got a piece of that winter storm that just hit Kansas and Nebraska and all that. It only dropped a couple inches here, and then it warmed up. It's about 30 degrees, and uh, it's getting downright foggy. I lost Dave back there. I think he stopped to do some filming himself. Um, but a really nice day along the trail here. Um, I didn't take the time to take my uh, take my windbreak off my sled because I thought maybe I might get an opportunity to even do some ice fishing this weekend. I think that's going to come in handy. What I wish I had done is uh, if you stop over to uh, Wilderness Outfitters uh, uh, Pathfinder School uh, YouTube channel, Dave Canterbury did a nice video on uh, using electrical conduit kind of like what I use for my frame for my shelter here uh, to uh, to use as a brake as a harness for pulling a sled in the snow kind of wishing uh, I had gone ahead and done that uh, I was gonna build one of those and you know obviously give him credit for the idea because it's a pretty neat idea and I'm sure it'll work great but uh, kind of wishing I'd done that might get a little snow tonight and the plan is probably won't have time to do much more filming before dark Gonna set up shelter, get some firewood uh, tomorrow morning if there's some fresh snow on the ground. Uh, like right now, we're gonna go out and do a little tracking. I'm gonna practice tracking. That's something I really want to work on. I want to get good at. And uh, you know, I know the basics. Just really need to practice it. So stick around and uh, probably see you around dinner time. Okay, it's not dinner time yet, but uh, it's not. Maybe you might like to see the lake all shrouded, shrouded in fog. Then I get to try out my new camera. Uh, this is an actual video camera. Uh, my last one was a it was a point and shoot that has a video feature, but it's waterproof, so I'll be using that quite a bit too. But uh, this one for where I am right now is a really nice, uh, 
Really nice camera. I really like it. We'll be camping just the other side of that hill right there. Um, pretty close to where we were last time. Probably not the exact same spot. Kind of want to conserve resources over there, but pretty close. All right, well, we're doing a little bit of backwoods cooking on a Friday night. Um, I like a good steak. Uh, Dave brought along these, uh, brought a couple of steaks here along. Um, his wife marinated them, and man, they smell good. Uh, he's, I brought a couple onions. Uh, I was going to make some uh, kind of campfire onion soup. Dave uh, chose to use his onion. He's going to put that, he's got that uh, flavoring up his steak there. I got some on mine, but you can see right here. Pretty good, really, if you like onion soup or the French onion soup. Take an onion, split it down the middle, kind of four ways, hollow out the middle, drop a bouillon cube and a good sized pat of butter in there, and then uh, wrap it in foil and drop it in the fire, and you can leave it there pretty much as long as you want. It's eventually going, it'll just, uh, it'll caramelize. The inside will still be good, it'll be, it'll taste just like French onion soup, but the the outside will caramelize if you like caramelized onions, which I do. Um, it's kind of raining tonight, a little bit. A little uh, mixture of freezing rain and ice pellets, um, but nothing too bad. It's not not really all that cold out here. What would you say it is, Dave? About 25, 26? Yeah, 20, yeah. It might even be a shade warmer than that. We haven't checked the thermometer in a while. Well, there's breakfast. We got a cup of water uh, boiling for coffee, and uh, you might recognize those steaks. Those are what was left over from last night. We ate quite a bit. Those things were huge. Um, that's going to be my breakfast this morning. It's Saturday. Uh, most most weekdays, I'm, I'm in a hurry to get to work and all of that, so I don't get meat other than maybe a McDonald's sandwich or something. So I'm pretty happy to get steak on Saturday morning. Well, there's the next phase of the uh, in my quest for the perfect. Uh, deer slash elk camp uh, shelter with my hammock um, now obviously with that I've got the three-piece MSS sleep system I don't need to get too fancy with it I could just use a you know a good uh, tarp and a diamond shape over top of it a lot of guys do that I know I like to be comfortable and uh, when I uh, when I come out here in the fall late fall early winter deer hunt I'm I'm going to do a, a week-long hunt out here this year uh, to make up for the fact that I didn't get out near as much as I should have last year. Um, I'm going to just take a full week off of work, and uh, I want to have a, a shelter that I can just put up. It's carefree. I don't have to worry about it, and I think this is going to work, um, although this is a real sloppy incarnation of it here because we got out here late last night, and I was uh, kind of tired from a long week. I just wanted to get something to cover myself, and... It uh, looks a little rough, but my thinking is, you see the, the bump sticking out the back there, that's my my trekking poles. Um, I'm thinking I could put some uh, toggles in there, maybe some stones or something like that, and just tie, them, uh, tie a knot on them and give myself some tie outs, and I can just pull that back this way, tie that out here, and that's gonna give me plenty of room inside there. And again, I got a lot of extra material here. I could make a really nice shaped, uh, shelter out of that and what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll flip the front back and we'll uh, take a look and see how much room we got in there all right this is what she looks like opened up I'm kind of standing in the way but you can see I've got my trekking poles back here thinking it wouldn't be too difficult to uh, set up a system to really spread this out I got plenty of extra material here that would make this a, a really nice size uh, really nice size shelter then I gotta tighten this up because obviously I got this little scoop, this little sag in this, and if I get a good amount of snow, that's gonna fill up with snow and cause all kinds of problems. So I gotta tighten that up. But for the most part, just tightening it up and, uh, and getting it in the shape I wanna get it, making sure it's tied down good, that's really the only uh, issues that I have with it because it's got plenty of room. Um, got my hammock hung a little bit low. I could hang it higher if I wanted because I got plenty of extra material. Although I think this is this is pretty comfortable for me, and uh, plenty of room in here. And I think, uh, given the fact that I've, I've got some extra room, I might even consider if I'm going to do like a week-long camp, building maybe a, a 
do-it-yourself uh, wood stove. I can get the pipes at the local hardware store, the, uh, the roof jack, even an insulated pipe, so I don't have to worry so much about it melting my tarp. Um, and with the sled, I could, that little bit of extra weight isn't going to amount to anything. Um, I can pull quite a bit in that sled, and it doesn't really add a whole lot to, uh, to my workload, at least. It doesn't feel like it. So for a winter camp or a deer camp, you know, when, when we got a good snow on the ground, this will work out just right. And, of course, with a wood stove, I wouldn't have to use a long fire lay. I'd use about a tenth as much wood, I think, you know, just to, I'd have to process it down a little bit more, obviously, cut it in shorter pieces and split it. But that wood would go a whole lot further, and I think what I would do then is, uh, you know, I'd only have to spend about the, the first few hours that I'm out here, maybe half a day or so the day before season starts to uh, process up enough firewood to get through the week. And in Michigan, with a dispersed camping permit, you can camp in a place like this in a state game area. I think it's 14 or 15 days in a row before you have to move at least a mile. You have to move your campsite. So technically, um, when those permits are, uh, are valid and in a state game area, that's May... 15th or September 10th to May 15th um, during that time technically you could live in the woods the entire year because all you have to do is every two weeks move your house and that wouldn't be too big of a deal with this obviously I'm not planning on doing that but I do want to spend a good solid week out here during uh, the firearm deer season in Michigan and then uh, of course I'll be back out here in May during the turkey season I'm going to do a week-long turkey camp but I won't be using this setup we'll, we'll be using something a whole lot lighter all right, that's the end of this uh, overnighter out in the uh, Lost Nations state game area, southern Michigan. Um, that's obviously not all of my camp, but that's my uh, my tarp and some of the things I chose to, to keep in my sled, along with the support for my, my uh, sled, the windbreak on my sled. And then, of course, I've got my pack, which looks full. I think you can see it. I don't know. It looks pretty full. But... Uh, it's actually one of the lighter packs um, I've ever carried, considering that my shelter and, and my water is in the uh, is in the sled. We're headed out, and uh, hopefully, be back out here again real soon.